intifada Long live the intifada Long live the intifada Assalamu alaikum everyone, peace be upon all of you, our Muslim friends and our friends of other faith or no faith. I wanted to start by offering a prayer on the souls of those shuhada who have risen, not fallen, as shuhada, as martyrs, starting from Gaza. Starting from Rafah, Al Mawasi, and going through Lebanon, the southern parts of Lebanon, and send our salah and prayers to their shuhada and to the shuhada all over the world who have stood for this just cause. And I wanted to offer my condolences to the majority of you who are here today who have lost a member of their family or loved one in this unjust, brutal, genocidal war. And on behalf of the children, and on behalf of the elders, and the widows, and the women, I want to say to you all, Thank you for being here today. Takbir! Congratulate yourself for taking the time and making the effort to stand for those who have no one to stand for them in the international leadership arena. Shame on the international community leadership who have failed us as citizens of their own countries. Shame! Starting by our own governments who have failed our own principles as Canadians. Shame! Canada has been historically known to be a peace broker. And I say to our Prime Minister and to the dinner front, Levels of the government, shame on you! Shame! Because you have failed us. You have failed our principles as Canadians. And we want you to stand back up again to Canada. And we want the international leadership to understand that this is not just a hive of emotions. We will continue to stand. We will continue to demonstrate we will continue to do whatever we are able to do in a civil manner to send our message clearly, which is stop the war now. 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 Every single one of us who have come out today is one with one clear message. We need to end this genocidal war. We need to end this war before it becomes something that would destroy the livelihood of people on earth. There is no point for us. There is no justification to see this tall number of people who have died in Gaza. Almost 186 accumulated number of those who have died, whether as, as a result of the bombs or different other means. Among those who have risen as shuhada, there are those who silent victims that no one pay attention to. Within these numbers, is about 6,000 women who have died, leaving behind them children who need them. Shame. And within this number, there's 16.5 thousand children who have been killed unjustly in this war. Shame! And there's approximately 21,000 who are mislocated. 
in Gaza, there is almost 25,000 children who have lost a parent or become an orphan for Allah's sake. Yeah. Who's gonna stand for these orphans? Who's gonna hug them? Who's gonna provide for them the comfort? Yeah. Shame on the international community leadership. Shame. We're complicitly behind this genocidal war by continuing to send the aids to the Israeli army who continue to criticize the genocidal war in Gaza. <laughs> 111 billion dollars has been spent on the top of what's annually been sent to the state of Israel's machine war. This is a, this is a shame, a big shame on the leadership of the United States of America. Shame! I am a strong believer in the American values. I am a strong believer in the moral values of every single American. Don't get me wrong. I am believing in what an average American believes in. And we all believe that we need to stand for justice. We need to end genocidal wars. And we need to stand for those who have no voice to express themselves. <laughs> this number will be translated to the following. There's 15 people who are being killed an hour in Gaza as a result of this unfair war. Shame! Shame! There's almost six children dying every hour in Gaza for Allah's sake. Shame! There's about 35 people injured every hour. Shame! And that means there's almost 42 bombs dropped every hour. Shame! That means there's 12 buildings are being destroyed every hour. Shame! Out of the 36 hospitals in Gaza that was suffering as a result of the embargo and the siege, there's only 17 hospitals that are still partially operating as a result of the lack of fuel and the necessities and the supplies they need to serve the people in Gaza. Shame! What I want to explore today is the psychological impact of this war on children. I have counted almost 25 symptoms that children as a result of war will be suffering from. When you talk about 25,000 children in Gaza who have lost a parent or become an orphan, it tells you of how devastating their life has become. And I'm quoting a story from one of the reporters of UNICEF who was briefing in one of the meetings and shared a story of Razan. Razan is an 11 years old child who was living with her two siblings and parents with her uncle after they deported from Gaza. And in one day, and maybe one night, a bomb fall into the family's house where they were sitting. And as a result of that, Razan lost both her parents and both of her siblings. Shame. And she suffered an injury that ended in ebulating her leg. And her wounds afterwards were infected. Razan is still suffering of not being able to move physically. But Razan will continue to live the rest of her life with a complicated grieving disorder and a separation disorder that will cripple her life the rest of the life she will be living in this planet. Shame! When we lose a loved one, and those of you who are caregiver know what I'm talking about, there are teams who are deployed to ease the pain on children or adults. But when it comes to the children of Gaza, when it comes to the children of Lebanon, when it comes to the children of Yemen, when it comes to the children who are being lost in war zones, they have no support.
They have no one to stand for them except you. And congratulations for you to stand for them. Takbir! Takbir! Here is my message to you as I'm concluding. Please do not give up. Please do not fail the children of Gaza. Please continue to stand up for them. We need to change the narrative that the media, mass media is promoting wrongly in the minds of people. Every one of you is responsible to promote the truth, to show the whole world what is really happening on the ground. It is our responsibility to use social media to do this job and we will do it by the will of Allah Azza wa Jal. We will continue to speak despite of the bullying of those who are bullying their own employees and those who are bullying us as a result of being in the authority power, power of authority. We will not be intimidated. We'll continue to stand for justice and we'll continue to speak the truth and we will be winning at the end by the will of the mighty Allah Azza wa Jal. Takbir! Finally, we can do a lot by our money by contributing to whatever organizations legally operating here in Canada and operating in the war zones so that we're able to provide something for these children that would provide some comfort to them. So hopefully one day they will be able to stand once again on their feet and hopefully one day they will be able to join programs that will psychologically be able to help him heal and hopefully one day they will become strong, independent individuals who will be able to stand for justice as we're doing that for them. In whatever language you speak, in whatever faith you believe, please take the time and contemplate and pray for the victims of the war all over the globe. Thank you so much and peace be upon all of you. Takbir!